People wondered, a hundred years ago or more, uh, at the turn of the previous century, if the solar system has a star and planets that orbit it, and planets have moons that orbit them, atoms have nuclei and electrons that orbit them, maybe it's that all the way down. It's fair. <laughs> or all the way up, right? So we have a galaxy. There's a center of the galaxy, and our whole solar system is orbiting the galaxy. Maybe it's just solar systems all the way down. But you get to the size of the atom, and there's nothing smaller than that. There's nothing smaller than the particles that make up the nucleus. There isn't some other structure of the natural world that we have yet discovered, nor that we think is there, if you probe the atom and look at the nucleus and say, oh, there's another layer right on down. No, we, we ain't finding that. Why do you think Mercury and Venus don't have moons? Well, Mercury's pretty small. Mercury is, I, I forgot whether it's just slightly bigger or just slightly smaller than our moon, but it's small. It's, it's much denser, it has a huge iron core, so it's much heavier than the moon. It's hard to have something else orbiting you when you're small. Jupiter is huge, has more mass than all the other planets in the solar system, mm -hmm. and, and it has 60 plus moons orbiting it. 60 plus? It's its own mini planetary system, if you will. The act of being small doesn't preclude having moons, it's just harder when you're that small and orbiting that close to the sun. Because then you have a gravitational tug of war. You know, who's your daddy? <laughs> who's your gravitational allegiance? <laughs> who's your gravity daddy? <laughs> who's your gravity daddy? <laughs> so, uh, by the way, Pluto mm -hmm. is also small. They're like six moons in the solar system bigger than Pluto. But Pluto mm -hmm. has multiple moons. The point is, that far out in the solar system, there's very little sort of gravitational um, disturbances from other objects. So you can uh, sustain orbits, however delicate they are. I, th I always thought size was indicative of whether it was allowed to be a planet or a moon. Well, sort of, okay? So it turns out if you're really, really small, mm -hmm. your gravity loses to the structural integrity of the object. Mm -hmm. So the rock will take whatever shape it wants. So below a certain size, stuff in the solar system looks like Idaho potatoes. This is sufficiently small that it takes whatever shape the rocks demand of it. All right, and rocks to take their own shape based on the chemistry and how they formed. So, but if this object were larger, then the gravity of the object says, I'm trying to get everything as close to the middle as I can. And there's only one shape you take if everybody tries to get close to the middle, and it's a sphere. So to be a planet, you gotta be big enough to have enough mass to be a sphere. But that's not the only rule. Pluto's big enough to be a sphere. Now we say, in your orbit, we want you to be dominant. We don't want anything else competing with your orbit. So Pluto is orbiting what we call the Kuiper Belt. There's thousands of other objects. Nobody in the asteroid belt owns the space of objects. So they're all asteroids, even though one of the asteroids is big enough to be a sphere. The moon is spiraling away from Earth at the rate of a few inches a year. One effect of that is that Earth is slowing down in our rotation. We have to put in leap seconds every now and then. Ooh. You know what the moon is trying to do? What? It's trying to slow us down so that one day on Earth equals one month for the moon. And when that happens, we will always show the same face to the moon. No. And when that happens, there will be no tides at all. Tides will end. Well, moon tides will end. We'll still have sun tides, but the moon tides will end. Yeah. What are moon tides exactly? The moon, the gravity of the moon across the Earth mm -hmm. stretches the Earth. The part of the Earth close to the moon pulls closer to the moon. The part that's farther away is farthest away, and it stretches. And Earth rotates inside of those tidal bulges. You're at the beach, and the tide comes in. The tide comes out, goes out. Nothing's coming in and out. You are rotating on the solid Earth, in and out of a tidal bulge caused by the moon and the sun on the ocean surface. Could we effectively be seen as our, our, all our planets as moons for the sun? I don't see why not, except because the sun is like alive with energy. Right. We, we have a different designation for it. Okay. Because it's hot. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> Hot's a little uh, overrated, but it's a little warm. It's warm. Let's see, if we were just plopped onto a gas giant, such as Jupiter, what would happen to us, assuming we could survive? There isn't a solid surface we could stand on, so where would we go? Good question. So, if I plunk you down on Jupiter, you would just descend through the clouds, okay? Jupiter gets denser and denser and denser as it goes down. If you have a pressure-proof suit that you're wearing, 
you will continue to fall until you are about the same density as the surrounding area, and then you just sort of bob there and float. That's what would happen. So you would find your floating point. Your so floating speak. point. So, but if you didn't have your pressure suit, you'd be crushed by the atmospheric pressure that was there. But don't they? A and you would vaporize because it gets very hot very quickly. Is that what happened? But at ignoring Cassini? the vaporizing <laughs> and avoiding getting crushed, you'll find you'll find your 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 uh, your place, your zone. What would the climate uh, be like on Earth if it wasn't for the axial tilt? This is someone who knows that Earth is tipped on its axis relative to our orbit around mm -hmm. the sun. So it would tip like this. That because of that tipping, for one part of the year, the northern hemisphere is tipped towards the sun. Ah. And six months later, that same hemisphere is tipped away from the sun. Now, since we're part of the same Earth as the southern hemisphere, mm -hmm. if we're tipped towards the sun in the north, they're tipped away from the sun at the same time. So we experience summer when Australia experiences Correct. winter. That's all. That's all that's going on. So then how does the equator stay warm all the time? Oh, well, if the equator is exactly between the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, then they are switching always between summer and winter, then the equator has no seasons. Interesting. Because it can't. But wouldn't uh, like it can't have seasons when it's even uh, on it the other side. It can't have seasons because mm. it is always exactly between all other seasons. The only way to be that is to have no season at all. And what they do is they say, "Oh, it's the rainy season, or it's the you know the stormy season." Yeah, but to make to, them feel good about it, just so they think they're having a season. But temperature wise, the equator has no seasons. How similar must an exoplanet be to Earth in order to host human life? Oh, you know, I think we can handle a planet that has slightly less gravity, slightly more gravity if your heart is strong and you weigh 230, 240, you're not going to complain. So Don't take me back up there. <laughs> so there's a range. You, you won't be fatter, you'll just weigh more. So my mass will be the same. No, mass will be the same, correct. But your weight can be less or more, right. depending on what planet you're on. In fact, it's less or more on Earth. If you go to the equator and the equator is spinning, uh, at the equator you're moving 1,000 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, you weigh less on the equator than you do here in New York City. You weigh less on a mountaintop than you do in a cave. We should go to the equator, guys. <laughs> Is the Big Bang Theory only for the observable universe, or does it uh, encompass like like the entirety of everything? Ooh. Is this still considered a theory? So a theory... <clears throat> is the modern word we use to describe our successful understandings of the operations of nature. So you have quantum theory, relativity theory, evolutionary theory. So people say, oh, it's just a theory. That's the word we use to describe stuff that works. If you have an idea that hasn't been tested yet, it's a hypothesis. Oh. Okay. The Big Bang is our understanding of the existence and expansion of the universe in which we live. And it goes not only to the edge of the observable universe, but it would include the universe beyond that. It's just that it's hard to get answers to that which is beyond our horizon. So colloquially we say it is the theory of our understanding of the, of the visible universe, but technically the whole universe came into existence, even the parts you can't see right. in what we call the Big Bang. 